Hi, students, and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian, and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Budapest in the heart of Europe. I hope everybody is having a fantastic start to their 2021 year. Looking forward to a productive and healthy uh, year coming ahead. Hi, Mahbuba. Hello, Joban Preet, Dhruv, Murugesan, Samina, Marjona. Very nice to see many students in the class already. Uh, we are looking at speaking part three. We're going to practice some of these more challenging questions, and I will tell you uh, how to get a band nine and give you some example sentences for that. Hello, Ois. Hi, honey. Welcome to our members. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there. And for general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com on both of those websites. We have lots and lots of materials and assistance for you to improve communication and your language skills, including grammar and vocabulary. This is our academic website here at aehelp.com. You can click that big red button to join the premium package for students in Saudi Arabia. We are a British Council IELTS registration center, so you can register through us if you're there. We are also certified British Council agents. Uh, this is our general IELTS website here with the green background. Again, you can click that big red button uh, to join us there and in your my student account you have some free speaking practice available let me just quickly show you that uh, with our academic website here at the top you log into your uh, my student account and then uh, once you're in your my student account you have lots and lots of goodies including this uh, student partner speaking when you click on that it will open up another page and on this page you will find other IELTS students who are waiting uh, to chat right now we have Abhinav uh, waiting for a speaking uh, partner and you can video chat audio chat with them you can send them a text message so uh, make sure to use that. It's absolutely free. Okay. All right, everyone. And you can do that on the General IELTS website, of course, as well. And you can link the app, Academic IELTS Help, to your website. And General IELTS Help app for your mobile will link to G IELTS Help as well. So let me brighten up our day here. A little bit more in the announcements. If you have questions, just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. If you want to get our books, you can do so at Amazon. Search for A Helps Academic IELTS or G Helps General IELTS. And after this class, uh, tomorrow, Monday, and on Tuesday, there's no class. Okay, usually we do not have classes Monday and Tuesday. But then I will uh, start with our regular schedule again on Wednesday at 15 o'clock uh, Central European Standard Time with speaking part one. And then we'll have classes uh, Wednesday to Saturday. Okay, everyone. So that's all the announcements. You can always find lots of uh, speaking questions, task two essays, and our schedule on our YouTube community posts on our channel. We're always keeping that fresh, adding new posts all the time. And this is a speaking class, so make sure to speak and repeat. So copy my fluency as best as you can, my pronunciation, my intonation, my enunciation. Be loud, be confident when you're speaking. That's a really important part of IELTS, okay? Confidence. Uh, how can you be confident in IELTS? Lots of practice. Imagine that the examiner is your grandma or your grandpa. You feel comfortable with them. Speak in full sentences. Okay, let's get into a few questions right away. 
and then we'll talk strategy. So here, um, the IELTS examiner, you've finished your part one, your part two, you're about uh, seven minutes into your IELTS speaking interview. You just finished the long part, the cue card. The examiner says that's the end of part two. Now we will continue with part three. For part three, I will ask you some more questions related to the topic of part two. Uh, let's talk about trade and commerce. So as soon as you hear trade and commerce, you should have a few ideas in mind. For me, these are some of the words that come to mind right away. International business, export, import. What comes to your mind? So when you hear the examiner say these words, let's talk about trade and commerce. Uh, what kind of words do you think of? Hi, Eugene. Love the panda. Love the cat. Okay. So what comes to mind um, when, uh, when you think about trade and commerce or when you hear these words? It's really important to focus and have some words going through your mind. So Honey says the word profit. Sure. Absolutely. I think that's a good word, Honey. Okay. Uh, Sonia says e-commerce. Why not? So not just physical, but e-commerce. All right. Digital. Yeah, it's becoming big. Crypto these days. Wow. What growth there. Okay. Uh, Mahdi says sanctions, right? Okay. So restrictions on trade. Sanctions. That's an important word. Uh, revenue. Economy. Very good. Okay, so this is the concept of word association. And when you're practicing for the IELTS before your exam, this is exactly what you should be doing with your speaking partners is play some what's called word association games. So one of you says trade and commerce. The other one says export, import. The other one says e-commerce and sanctions. And then the uh, person again says revenue and economy. Uh, how often do you try this for practice at home? So this is called word association games. Okay. Word association games. Does anybody do that when you're practicing your vocabulary and for IELTS, you introduce the topic of the questions and then you play without answering questions. You just play this kind of, let's come up with words that are connected to each other and these ideas. Who does that? Anybody do that regularly once or twice a week? Okay, Marvik says, yep, I do it. Good. Ibrahim says, sure, I do it. Great, yeah. So word association games are good. Okay, so they're good to develop your quick thinking and uh, lexical resource, all right? So do it. All right, great practice. Okay, so let's get into it. That was strategy right there. Okay, so uh, so the examiner says, let's talk about trade and commerce. And then they ask you the first question. Why is it important for countries to trade goods and services with each other? Okay, give me a nice full sentence answer. Pay attention to the detail. Important for countries. So why is it important for countries to trade goods and services with each other? Visualize. Okay. Let's see what you come up with. All right. Always says uh, trade is necessary for countries uh, to find markets and export their goods and uh, access products to achieve economic profits. Okay, OS, I had to do quite a bit of adjusting to make that grammatically uh, clear and coherent. Okay, uh, Roshni says, well, in the era of globalization, the exchange of goods is imperative as it helps to boost economy for a country as well as the quality of life. Okay, and then I see that you're coming up with an example there, Roshni. Let me try to find the second half of it. Like India buys, okay, some sort of product, I'm guessing. Like India buys uh, rice from China, and this helps to increase uh, China's uh, global revenue. Absolutely, Rosh Roshni, that's great. Okay, all right, Kevin Bowie. 
says uh, trading commodities and amenities among nations is essential because it allows them to export products that are abundant in their domestic markets while importing uh, materials that they lack. In this way, each nation is supplied with the resources key to vigorous development, and this can enhance the quality of their products and services sent to other nations. Yeah, therefore improving global development in general, right, Kevin? Very good. Okay, that's a beautiful answer, Kevin. I'm always very impressed by your use of vocabulary, and not only your vocabulary, Kevin, but very intelligent answers. Okay, they make a lot of sense. Un says, I think it's vital as it enhances people all, people's overall quality of life. What I mean is by purchasing commodities overseas, people can own items that are not available in their local homes or in their, uh, dom from their domestic manufacturers, right? So this is where domestic and international, these words come to mind. Abhishek says, well, it is imperative for nations to exchange goods and services with other countries because it not only helps uh, the exporters to boost their economy, but also fulfills the requirements of the importers. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, also, some products are not available in the world, like fruits and vegetables. Every year, various uh, types of fruits such as kiwi and dragon fruits are sent uh, from warmer climates to cooler climates. Yeah, very good. Okay, so international trade is vital for the prosperity of most uh, people as there are certain products which are available or which are produced in specific regions of the world, say bananas in Honduras. However, these products are favored elsewhere so they are exported to say Canada in order to fulfill the domestic needs there. In this way, people can enjoy a greater diversity of products and services while improving their economies and global relations. Okay, so here, <coughs> excuse me, I've taken a little bit of a different approach to give you a natural way of infusing uh, your examples into your responses. Uh, let's take a look at this. So here's the question. Why is it important for countries to trade goods and services with each other? Uh, we're talking about international trade. So international trade is vital for the prosperity of most people as there are certain products which are produced in specific regions of the world, say bananas in Honduras. However, uh, these products are favored elsewhere, so they are exported to, say, Canada in order to fulfill the domestic needs there. In this way, people can enjoy a greater diversity of products and services while improving their ec economies and global relations. Okay. All right, notice this interesting um, use of language. Here I want to emphasize this part here for you, okay? Uh, this is kind of an interesting and natural way to include uh, an example into your explanation without going off topic, okay? And you can kind of drag your speech here as well. So watch my intonation here, okay? 
international trade is vital for the prosperity of most people as there are certain products which are produced in specific regions of the world. Here I take a pause, actually quite a long pause. So in specific regions of the world, say bananas in Honduras. Notice how long I pull this word, say this is basically this three, four seconds for this comma and the word here is where I'm generating my example. So say oranges in Florida, uh, say uh, Nissan vehicles in Japan. Okay, so in that time of the comma and dragging the word say, um, I can come up with an example. Okay. However, these products are favored elsewhere where they don't grow or are unavailable. So they are exported to, say, Canada, say, Russia, say, Sweden. Okay. You obviously don't have bananas there. Okay. All right. In order to fulfill the domestic needs there. In this way, people can enjoy a greater diversity of products and services while improving their economies and global relations. Okay, everybody catch that little tip? That's a nice way uh, for one or two of your examples to smoothly flow into your speech. Okay, try it, practice that at home. Okay, so the examiner will follow up with uh, another question like, uh, can you give some examples? Okay, and obviously I just gave the one with uh, Honduras, Bananas, Canada. Uh, but here, of course, the examiner is likely looking for more examples. So they might even say, instead of, can you give some examples? They might say, can you give some more examples? They'll just add the word more in there. And then you have to give one or two more examples. Now, there's a lot of different examples of uh, domestic products being exported to other countries. So this shouldn't be a problem. Okay, so give me some more examples of the import and export of goods from a domestic producer to somewhere where that product is needed. All right, Dhruv012 says, yes, just like India imports some railway technology from Japan, such as the bullet train, uh, which helps citizens to save time and increase GDP. Okay, very good, Dhruv, that's one example. Give me one more, okay? So that's, uh, that's great. Give me one more uh, example, okay? Agape says, for example, uh, my country of Ethiopia imports goods which are not available here, like smartphones, PCs, clothes, uh, from China and elsewhere. Uh, agape, good, uh, don't say and so on. Okay, uh, students, don't use so on or ETC in your writing or in your speaking on IELTS uh, simply because it has no value. Okay, so um, keep this in mind that, okay, so do not use and so on or ETC, meaning etc. Just give me a second, I'll get you back on camera here in just one moment. Uh, there's my lovely daughter with her smiley face back in 2016. It's a little bit bigger now, but still super cute. Okay. So, um, yeah, don't use uh, and so on or et cetera, uh, simply because it has no value for your reader or for your listener. In fact, it's just confusing, okay? So do not use and so on or et cetera. Uh, in your writing or speaking on IELTS as it has no value, okay? Uh, also, do not use the words thing or stuff as these have no value in communication, okay? So avoid those words, all right? Avoid those words, okay? Instead, find better ways or just finish uh, saying what you're saying. So in your case, Agape, just say phones, PCs, and clothes from China, okay? That's clear communication. All right, let's see what else we have. 
Honey says India imports mobile phone chips from China and exports Samsung phones to the U.S., which are produced locally. Okay, honey, good. Yeah, um, and uh, one of the services that India exports, of course, is a lot of customer support. There are massive customer support centers in India. Okay, for sure, that's one that comes to mind. Okay. Uh, Ibrahim says, an example, Uzbekistan is a country which exports fruits and vegetables to many countries where they are needed while improving its economy. Yeah, okay, good. All right. Um, certainly, let me give you a couple examples here. So, certainly, a couple of other uh, cases that come to mind are uh, India's exports of customer service for large international corporations like banks because of the uh, low wages and uh, widespread use of English or um, Uzbekistan's uh, export of cotton around the world uh, for uh, manufacturing fabrics. Okay. Uh, so can you give some more examples? Certainly. Okay. Again, this is speaking. So make sure you're speaking and repeating. Don't just listen. Okay. But speak and repeat. So can you give some more examples? Certainly a couple of other cases that come to mind are India's export of customer service for large international corporations like banks because of the low wages and widespread use of English or Uzbekistan's export of cotton around the world for manufacturing fabrics. Okay. All right. Uh, let's keep going. So um, when you see a plural, what's important here, just before I go on to the next question, when you see a plural like examples, try to give two. Okay. So examples, plural, give two. Everybody's clear on that? It's really important to pay attention to whether or not uh, you're asked a singular or a plural, okay? So again, I'm going to emphasize this for you, okay? So pay attention whether the question is asking in singular or plural. If it is plural be sure to give at least two items, okay, to your answer. It's really important, okay? Rashika says, yes. Saren says, got it, okay? They're paying attention to that, all right? Okay. So uh, let's keep going. Here we go. Next question. Uh, let me erase this more here. Um, okay. What are the advantages and disadvantages of importing products from other countries that are also available locally? Hmm, that's a fairly challenging question. Now, if I were asked a question like this in my everyday kind of travels, I would probably say, hmm, uh, that's a good question. Uh, let me think on it for a moment. Okay. So that's how I would start that one. All right. Hmm. That's a good question. Let me think on it for a moment. I definitely buy a little bit of time to think about it, actually think about it. Okay. All right. Uh, Guzal Abdalimova says, I do believe that it has more advantages as importing goods from other countries can spark an interest in manufacturers to produce high quality products 
in order to sell them due to strong competition. Okay, Guzal, you're definitely on to uh, the right idea. So uh, the advantages, disadvantages, one of the advantages is that it creates more competition, thereby improving the quality of domestic uh, products. Okay, uh, what are the disadvantages? You need to include that also, Guzal. Okay, you're missing that part of your answer. You're including the advantage and what you think, but not the disadvantage. This question asks you for both. What are the advantages and disadvantages? Okay, Un says, I think the advantages are some points that I said about people's fulfillments and profits, but concerning the other side of the coin, trading may result in crimes of illegal products like cocaine, okay, uh, contraband. They're called contraband products uh, on. Um, yes, and that's called smuggling. Uh, careful, Un, I think you have an interesting idea there, but you're getting yourself into a tricky situation with unique vocabulary, so black market trade and so on. You have to know the vocabulary. You don't need to go into that difficult direction. You can answer simpler by choosing ideas like competition, uh, and bankruptcy or financial challenges for uh, local industry, okay? All right. Uh, Roshni says, many gains from globalization, like access to an umpty number of brands, lots of jobs, um, come from the establishment of multinational companies such as McDonald's. Okay, Roshni, uh, those are the advantages. What are the disadvantages? So don't lose yourself in your answer. Control your ideas. Very important. Uh, Kevin says, the biggest merit of this approach is that it empowers local businesses to raise the standard of their products while offering a more competitive price to maintain a loyal customer base. Very good. However, the risk is that international firms may be too powerful to be challenged, so they might cause local businesses to collapse, which can take a toll on the local citizens and the entrepreneurial spirit. Very nice, Kevin. I made a few adjustments there to be a bit more natural. Uh, pay attention to those. Okay. Islam Beck says the advantages of importing goods brings new and exciting products to the local economy and makes it possible to build new products locally. On the other hand, there may be risks uh, for the exchange in foreign countries. Okay, Islam Beck, what are those? Make that clear. Okay. Stuti says. Importing products which are available in the country could lower their own economy, but from the perspective of the citizens, it creates uh, more options and increases quality, which is definitely an advantage. Stuti, that's very, very good, okay? So um, what would be an example of this? Think about it, okay? Uh, visualize. So. For me, for example, shoes come to mind or a lot of different types of foods that are available locally. So what are the advantages and disadvantages of importing products from other countries that are available locally? To stay on topic with a challenging question like this, buy some time with a phrase like, hmm, that's a good question. Let me think on it for a moment and paraphrase, immediately paraphrase using the question, okay? So uh, the benefits of importing products that are also made domestically is that this leads to greater competition, therefore uh, lower prices and better quality for consumers, okay? 
So here I have the advantages, and I'm thinking of paraphrasing like domestically. If I don't know the word domestically, I can say in their home country, so I can describe it, right? Uh, sometimes students think, oh yeah, sure, Adrian, you can say that because you have the vocabulary, but it's not really true. You can use other simpler vocabulary to express the same idea. It's more the idea that's important here, okay? Uh, so... And of course, I'm able to think of my explanation like competition leading to lower prices and better quality for the consumer because I'm buying some time at the beginning, okay? And now, before I go on, um, I want to include a quick example, okay? So, um, such as uh, quality running shoes for under $20. However, the downside to this may be that local businesses are pushed out, uh, leading to unemployment and debt uh, within the country. Okay, so uh, here we go. Repeat after me. What are the advantages and disadvantages of importing products from other countries that are also available locally? Hmm. That's a good question. Let me think on that for a moment. The benefits of importing products that are also made domestically is that it leads to greater competition, therefore lowering the prices and improving the quality uh, for consumers, such as uh, good quality running shoes for under 20 bucks. However, the downside to this may be that local businesses are pushed out, uh, leading to unemployment and debt within the country. All right. If trading among nations were to suddenly stop, how would this affect people's lives? And is this good or bad? Give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Obviously, it's a conditional. Pay attention to the condition. Okay? So, one more time. If trading among nations were to suddenly stop, how would this affect people's lives? Is this good or bad? For Dov says, if international trade were banned, it would create devastating consequences as nowadays most countries built their economies on international commerce and many businesses would just simply stop manufacturing goods and services. Okay, for Dov's nice answer, I made a few corrections there. Un says, if that were to happen, I would imagine the world would be rigid and poor. Nations would face recessions as they may produce excessive amounts of goods that their citizens don't need. Uh, besides that, people would cry, C-R-Y, cry, maybe. Um, I'm just kidding, Un, I don't think you're writing cry, maybe crime or something like that, but you're on the right track, Un. Okay, I, I would probably cry if international trade stopped. If I couldn't eat my bananas in the morning anymore, I'd be quite disappointed. Juan Pablo, good to see you in the class. Juan says, people just wouldn't have access to certain products which can be critical to their normal livelihoods. It's definitely bad because there are products, let's say some drugs, medicine, which are made in labs uh, abroad uh, that are vital for curing um, diseases such as malaria. Mm -hmm. Juan, very good point, very good example, okay? All right. Always says, I think if the export and import would stop suddenly, the effect would depend on the economic development for certain countries and um, the importance of self-sufficiency uh, would increase. In general, though, it would have a bad effect. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, all right, Un says, it wasn't cry, it was crave for certain goods. Yeah, like me for bananas, but I would also not just crave those bananas, Un, I would cry about those bananas. 
if I were stuck eating apples all my life, it'd be horrible. Okay. Nick Shant Mansotra says, well, definitely it will be hazardous for most nations because if trade were suddenly prohibited, it would create a crisis, a financial crisis for nations as many countries earn billions through various exports. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Movie lover. If international trading were to go full stop, this would create uh, famine and it would affect uh, livelihood negatively. For instance, the UAE is a country which is totally dependent on trade for food sustenance. Yeah, so famine um, could occur in many countries. Famine is the word uh, used when there's not enough food to feed the people. All right, okay. So in a situation where all export and import of goods were to suddenly end, many people and countries would be in dire circumstance, not only financially, but also physically, as many nations like the UAE depend on trade for food sustenance. Without this, there would be famine. Okay, so overall, this is definitely a negative. In fact, countries such as the U.S. allocate sanctions, which is a ban on trade as punishment for certain nations. Okay, that's where you can use the word sanctions. So I can't remember who it was, but somebody at the beginning, when I said, let's talk about uh, commerce and trade, and I said, you know, what words come to mind? Uh, one student said the word sanctions comes to mind. So uh, sanctions uh, works well here, okay? So here we go, repeat after me. If trading among nations were to suddenly stop, how would this affect people's lives? Is this good or bad? In a situation where all export and import of goods were to suddenly end, many people and countries would be in dire circumstance, not only financially, but also physically, as many nations like the UAE depend on trade for food sustenance. Without this, there would be famine. So overall, this is definitely a negative. In fact, countries such as the U.S., impose sanctions, which is a ban on trade as punishment for certain nations. Yeah, instead of allocate, impose is a better uh, verb here. Okay, it's not wanted, it's imposed. And we have an additive definition here, which is a ban on trade as punishment for certain nations. Okay. All right, so now, as long as you're doing a great job, the examiner will continue with some more questions. This is usually a hint that you have some good fluency, you're doing a good job, and uh, the examiner may introduce another related topic, like let's talk about product and service delivery. And then they'll continue with another question, like what are the most common ways that products and services are delivered to customers. Uh, give me a nice 
full sentence answer for this one. So what are the most common ways that products and services are delivered to customers? Okay, so answer, explanation, example. Okay, OS says there are several means to deliver orders to customers. Motorcycle or uh, care by mail or in-person pickup. Last month I received my dictionary, uh, which I purchased online. Um, okay. Ferdov says, using online software like apps and websites, selling through supermarkets or shops are the most popular ways to deliver goods to customers. The first one is optimal these days as it prevents people from spreading a disease. Yeah, Hadith, I will definitely check out your email, okay? If you've sent it, you've sent it to me, you will get a response. All right, Stuti says, uh, this is not a hide that technology is very developed nowadays and online sales is increasing day by day. People uh, also like uh, this in their busy schedules. Okay, Stuti, not bad, but you're kind of going off topic. So again, what are the common ways? Common ways is the plural here. So you need to mention at least two to three different ways that products are delivered to consumers, okay? Juan Pablo says the most common way for products is by mail, which is convenient because people can buy online and just wait for the product. When it comes to services, lots of them switch online. Okay. Again, give a couple of examples, all right? That's why I said before, pay attention to those plurals. Davron says uh, this leads to inflation. Okay, Davron, I think you're still answering the previous one. Okay, uh, Nassar says, I got eight, seven, five, seven, and six by watching your videos for one week. Big thanks. Nassar, big welcome. Good job uh, on getting those scores. Your average is seven, 7.5, which is great. That's fantastic. Uh, send me an email. I'd love to get your testimonial. Thank you for coming back and sharing your score. Fantastic. Congrats. Okay, Nick Hill says, both products and services are delivered to the customer, not only through online platforms, but also uh, through uh, retail stores uh, due to the advancements of technology. It has become much easier to deliver products. Okay, good. So the most common or the most frequent method of product delivery nowadays is either by mail, courier service, or through retail outlets. A lot of customers purchase products online, which are shipped by plane, train, and automobile, and eventually placed at the doorstep of the client. In addition, people, of course, can still go to traditional brick and mortar shops to procure their needs. All right, so here is some vocabulary and uh, fluency and grammar practice for you. Just repeat after. What are the most common ways that products and services are delivered to customers? The most frequent method of product delivery nowadays is either by mail, courier service, or through retail outlets. 
A lot of customers purchase products online, which are shipped by plane, train, and automobile, and eventually placed at the doorstep of the client. In addition, people, of course, can still go to traditional brick and mortar shops to procure their needs. Now, that's arguable. Maybe more people still go to shops. But um, anyway, IELTS isn't searching for the truth. They're searching for good answers. And here I've included the method of delivery, both the physical and non-physical. So plane, trains, and automobiles. All right, now they'll ask you a follow-up question to this, like which is the best and why? And then if you're doing a really good job and you still have a couple of minutes, they might ask you a couple more questions related to this topic. But for now, I'm going to stop there. You can practice these last three questions uh, or last few questions in partners uh, with each other. Again, you can do that on our website. So this is our academic website here at ahelp.com and you have a student partner speaking practice there and you have the same at our general IELTS website as well at gieltshelp.com. Uh, we are a certified British Council IELTS Registration Center for Saudi Arabia and we have British Council certified agents. So if you have questions, let us know. Definitely use our premium course. It's worth the investment. It doesn't cost much at all. It's a lifetime uh, membership, one-time payment. You can use our apps. And uh, for now, we will take two days break for the live classes. So no classes tomorrow or Tuesday. I will be back on Wednesday at the same time as this with speaking part one. Lots of fantastic interaction today from all of our students, so thank you for that. I really appreciate all of your effort. Keep practicing. Your brains are incredible learning machines. Never forget that. Sometimes students think, oh, I'm not improving. It's never true. You are improving. You're all beautiful, brilliant people. Take care. And hopefully I will see you on Wednesday. Much love to all of you. I'm Adrian signing out from Central Europe for now. Bye.